In our last episode, we started our series on the Fallout 3 Metro system by exploring the Jury Street Metro, which is off on its own, disconnected from the greater DC Metro system. But now we've got to find the best entry point into the DC Metro system so we can explore it. There are a few options, but the one that made the most sense to me is at the very southern portion of the map. The problem is that it is a bit of a walk away is away from Vault 101 and the Jury Street Metro. So retracing our steps back towards Vault 101 from the Jury Street Metro, we can take the road south. Along the way, I stumbled upon a few special encounters. There was Mel, the would-be raider. Uh, uh, hold it right there, pal. You're giving me everything you own. Uh, now. Oh, I'm out of here! Oh! And Mel gave me my level three, and we stumble upon a few baddies. By now, day was beginning to break, and eventually, I stumbled into Uncle Leo. You haven't shot at me yet. That's different. I'm glad you stopped by to see me. Strangely enough, I never bumped into him on my other character, and I think the reason is because on my other character, I went straight to the Bailey's Crossroads Metro, right out of the vault, to start the Operation Anchorage DLC, which you can start at any level, and you walk away with some of the best gear in the game. Incidentally, the Bailey's Crossroads Metro is fairly close to the Metro system we're going to start exploring today. So for players who want an easier time of things, you can follow the same path and go just a wee bit farther to start Operation Anchorage before moving on to the flooded metro. At level two or three, this walk is very dangerous. We have to fight our way through a number of raiders. and a number of special encounters. I found a scavenger staking claim to some Protectron salvage. Don't even think about it. That Enclave tech is mine, fair and square. We can use him to repair, and as a merchant, I stumbled upon a Deathclaw, fighting raiders and scavengers. I tried to sneak around him, but he kept on finding me. Thankfully, my game crashed before I had to face him, and when I reloaded, a different random encounter had spawned. I found another scavenger, this time with a Mr. Handy. Oh, hey there. Do you need something? And he also could repair and act as a vendor. At last, we arrive at our destination. Nearby, we find a Palowski Preservation Shelter, and inside, we find the remains of a pre-war Chinese communist sympathizer or a spy, she's clutching a Chinese Army Special Ops training manual, a grenade, and two stim packs. Now, when we arrived, the Pip-Boy tells us that this is the flooded metro station, but in the world, this metro station isn't labeled, so we don't exactly know what this was supposed to be called before the war. Nearby, we do find a map of the metro system, and even this sign here is rubbed out. However, taking a look at this map, we're right about where the Minuteman marker is on the blue line. So before the war, this was likely called the Minuteman Metro Station. Now, speaking of this map, it doesn't do us much good. You'd think we'd be able to travel from line to line, explore the blue line, then the white line, then the red line. But the post-apocalyptic state of the DC Metro System has made that impossible. Some of the markers on this map don't even exist in the game. If they ever existed in the universe, they have long since been buried. 
Platts and Becton are examples. And some of the dots on this map don't correspond to the markers we find in the game. The one we're at now is an example. None of the markers outside the station are labeled, even though the map says Minutemen. So for the purposes of this series, we're going to install a mod that replaces this map to make it more useful. Now obviously this map is not going to be lore friendly, after all it doesn't make sense in the world to find a pre-war map depicting the metro system as it appears after the war. But this is going to make the metro map a bit more useful, and it should aid us in our exploration of it. This mod is called A Decent Metro Map by Arzoni. Now he made the mod, but he didn't make the map. The original map author is Xiempi, who made the map and published it to Reddit. I'm also using a mod called Metro, You Are Here, by Bundus Dito. This mod places a little red arrow on the map that says, You are here when we find these maps in the world. Now, for some reason, it doesn't actually work at this one. And reading some of the comments on the mod, it sounds like the arrow is missing on a few other maps in the world, but the arrows will appear on most of them. We're starting here, at the very bottom, and the furthest west we can on the map, at the flooded metro. According to this map, the flooded metro connects to Mason District South, whereupon we exit the metro system and get to explore Mason District before moving on to Franklin Station. As you can see by starting here, we can fully explore all the underground metro systems west of the Potomac, before eventually finding the Arlington Cemetery Metro Station, which travels under the Potomac and leads to the eastern side, granting us access to the rest of the DC Metro system. Sure enough, as we approach the escalators, we discover the flooded Metro, and we can open the big metal gate. On the other side of the gate, we find the station dark. Turning on our light, lying on the ground, is a tipped over Nuka-Cola machine. And standing next to it is one that we can loot. Moving forward, we see that the pathway towards the turnstiles is blocked in with rubble. We can't explore this metro system the way it was intended to be explored. Instead, we have to open up a service doorway to the left. This leads us to a staircase that we can follow downstairs and around a corner to arrive at a security door. The door is bathed in emergency light only. Opening the door, we arrive in a hazy tunnel. It's a bit too dark to see, so risking our light for now, we see that the tunnel goes off to the left and the right. Peering right. Oh, what is that? All right, well, it moved on. Going left for now. Oh, no. There's another one. We see a gate blocking off our path to the left, but we see a mire lurk walking around on the other side of it. There is a room beyond there. Well, if we can get there, we can't get there from here. Looks like we've got to go right. But turning the corner, we see the mire lurk. Pulling out the 10 millimeter submachine gun, we can try it. Great! The Mirelurk on the other side of the gate found us! Right. Well, we're gonna have to play this a little bit more carefully. We can start by going back into the tunnel and luring the first Mirelurk away from the others. Then, heading back to the tunnel, we can turn right and head uphill. Here we find a dead end, illuminated by a construction light attached to a generator. There is a door to the left, and passing through it, we find the next Mirelurk. Out of ammo for the 10 mil. Switching to the assault rifle. Out of ammo for the assault rifle. Switching to the 32 caliber. Out of ammo for the 32 caliber. Switching to the combat knife. Oh. 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 
Oh, God. I am starting to think that this may have been a big mistake. I am seriously underleveled for this flooded metro and seriously undergeared. I only have a few stim packs left. I'm completely out of ammunition for all of my weapons. Guess I'm gonna be filleting Mirelurk today. After healing on up and looting, we can retrace our steps and go back into that room where we found the last Mirelurk. Here we find a first aid kit on the wall, thank God. Inside we get one stim pack, some Radex, and a bobby pin. Turning right, we find a big hole in the ground. Oh wow, that's deep. And listening close. Those are footsteps. All right, so there are more Mirelurks out there. Turning right, we find only one locker with scrap we can loot. Moving left, we find a bunch of ruined books and more minor scrap lying about. As we scrounge around at the base of a pillar, however, we see a trail of blood and bloody handprints leading behind it. And here we find a bleached skeleton. On the pedestal behind the skeleton is a box of 44 Magnum rounds, a copy of Guns and Bullets magazine, and on the ground next to the skeleton is a scoped 44 Magnum, as well as two pieces of jet. All right, just when we thought we had run out of luck. Moving from behind the pedestal, we find a staircase in the middle of this room by the pillar that had the first aid kit leading downstairs. At the bottom of the stairs, we see a path to the left and a path to the right. The path to the left is a staircase, and the path to the right leads to a room that is mostly filled in with rubble. But here we find another Mirelurk. Heading back up the stairs to make some space. Oh, this 44 caliber. I love it. Moving back downstairs, we can finish exploring the room to the right. Before we go up the staircase to the left, we see that this is the room that we saw at the bottom of that hole in the floor above. But we see that there's a hole in this floor too. And a staircase leading down. Okay, well, before we go down, we'd better see what's up this staircase to the left. Crouching down and creeping forward, we find a large room with at least one mire lurk. Oh, that's a mire lurk hunter. Oh, God. <laughs> Even the 44 caliber hits like a BB gun on this thing. Grabbing the combat knife. Oh, jeez. This one took me a while. I died probably half a dozen times to this doggone Mirelurk hunter. And mainly because there's actually a second Mirelurk in a smaller room just on the other side of this one. And I found it difficult to pull one at a time, but I'll show you how I got through it. We picked up a bottle cap mine in the Jury Street Metro Station in our last episode. So grabbing it, we can go back down the stairs and place it in the middle of this hallway. Then, moving back into the big room, we can try to grab the attention of the Mirelurk Hunter. Now we see that there's a big giant square in the middle of this room that we can kite these Mirelurks around. The other Mirelurk sees us from the adjacent room. The trick here, at least what I tried to do here, was to time it so that both of the Mirelurks were practically standing on top of each other when I eventually lured them back towards my bottle cap mine. After a while, I thought I finally got it. So, heading back into the hallway, we can pass over the mine and retreat to the stairs. Then, we wait. We killed one, and we crippled the left leg of the Mirelurk Hunter. He hobbles up the stairs, and with his leg crippled, we can just run around this rectangle and take pot shots at him. But I only had four rounds left in my Magnum. I had to make them count. And to the last bullet. God, those Mirelurk hunters are insane. I should note here that on higher levels, Mirelurk kings can spawn here. So at least we're lucky that we didn't see any of them. Well, with this room clear, we can head in and loot it. Moving left first, we find a number of shelves and boxes. They're mostly empty. 
Then, moving around to the other side of this big square, we find a bit of a platform here. We just find more scrap in a box. Nothing of interest. It's here we find the other side of the cage. This is the cage we looked through when we came into the tunnel from the other side. Looking over the banister, we can peer down and we see this goes for quite a ways. Then, completing the loop, we can turn left to go into that small room the other Meyer Lurk was hiding in. Here we find a big water tank, some metal barrels, a shopping cart, just a bunch of trash everywhere. In the northwestern corner, however, we find some rat away in an otherwise empty locker. A couple of boxes that are mostly empty, but we do find some minor scrap and tools. But then, in a cabinet, we find a laser pistol with 31 energy cells. Well, it may be an energy weapon, which I'm not specking into, but at least it's ammunition. At least I don't have to kill all these Marlurks with just a knife. But wait a minute. On our way in, we passed by that special encounter. He was a merchant. He sold ammunition. Quickly, retracing our steps out of the service area, back into the metro station, then out the metro station, we find that the merchant is still arguing with his Mr. Handy unit just outside the preservation shelter. To keep the grass freshly cut. Hello again. How about that robot, huh? We can quickly sell all the junk we don't need, buy a couple of frag grenades, and all of his 10 millimeter ammunition. That's the only ammo he had. You know, I'm typically not impressed by the inventories of these wandering scavengers. I never buy from them, at least not on my last character, but man, am I happy to see him now. Okay, we've got a couple of grenades. We've got a few rounds of 10 mil. We've got a laser pistol and laser pistol ammo, and a few chems, some jet, medex, buff out, and a couple of stim packs. Heading back to the metro station, we can retrace our steps all the way back into the service area, down the tunnel, down the stairs, right into the room, and then down this next staircase to yet another level. At the bottom, we find a room to the right and a staircase directly in front of us. Moving into the room to the right, we find tipped over tables and chairs, some industrial machinery, but that's it. Back to the hallway, we can move up the stairs in front of us. We arrive at a security door that's already open, and this leads to a huge room. This is the large room we saw when we peered over the banister in the room where we found the Myrler Hunter above. There is a staircase in the middle of this room going even further down, and we hear more footsteps. I wanted to see if there was anything on this level, so I started searching all the way around this box, but I didn't see anything. But in so doing, I caught the attention of the Mirelurks patrolling down below. Quickly, I ran to the top of the stairs and pulled out a grenade. Oh! Well, what was the point of that? Time to fillet this sucker! Uh, well, that didn't work so well. This was another really difficult fight for me. I tried the grenade trick a number of different times. I even tried positioning barrels in such a way so that it blocked the staircase, hoping that they would get stuck here and I could just lob grenades at them. But that didn't work. They just plowed right through. After about half a dozen attempts, I was finally successful and here's how I did it. Moving to the staircase, we can peer over it with our light on to get their attention. They charge us and start running up the stairs. Then we can move to the security door and then waiting until they start to climb the stairs, close the door. This forces them to briefly stop, which gets them close together and we can lob a grenade. Okay, sort of useful. I'll take it. Now, we aim for the legs. It was here I realized the dire situation I was in. I started frantically switching between all of my weapons, only to realize I was completely out of ammunition. And then I remembered the laser pistol. In this room, the Mirelurks are getting stuck on the geometry, and if we cripple their legs, we can kite them around the big square in the middle. Back downstairs, we can head to the large room and take the staircase down, closing the door behind us. Ah! 
Ah, down we go. Right at the bottom. It's filthy and covered in eggs. I was low on health, so while running, I tried to loot as many eggs as I could. I had three stim packs left, but I wanted to save them. So it's time to use some chems. I popped some Medex, some Psycho, and Jet, and ate some of the Mirelurk eggs. One down. One more to go. Let's see what's in this box. No, not a drinking animation. God. Oh. Okay, 16 rounds left in the 10 mil. Let's pull out the submachine gun. We seem to have aggroed another one. Aim for the legs. And we're out of ammo. Lead pipe. <laughs> Run away! We got one, but we're almost dead! Let's drink the rest of our Nuka-Cola and a uh, couple blood packs. Oh, that's only one HP. Crap. Uh, sure, the Nuka-Cola Quantum! Back to the room at the bottom of the stairs, we can frantically loot all of these egg clutches. They're filled with Mirelurk meat and hatchling Mirelurk meat. Each of the Mirelurk meat heals 20 HP, and the hatchling Mirelurk meat heals 5 HP. I had one round left for all of my guns. The 32 caliber. Uh, but where is he? Hey, where'd you go? There he is! That's it! But then I remembered it. A sawed-off shotgun. When did I get this? Must have been while I was fighting those raiders on the way here. I have seven shells. Well, let's use it! Oh, saved by shotgun. I think I had a dream about this once. With that, the Mirelurks appear to all be dead. I went up the stairs to explore this little gangway, but there's nothing up here. So back downstairs, we can loot the dead and then loot each and every one of these Mirelurk egg clutches. Behind one of the clutches, we find a gun case inside a laser rifle and microfusion cells. 42 of them. All right. There are so many Mirelurk egg clutches here filled with meat. Who needs a stim pack when you've got Mirelurk meat? Now, these clutches are actually part of a Wasteland Survival Guide quest that we get from Moira Brown. I covered that quest in my video on the topic that you can watch here. When all the clutches are looted, we find two exits, a door to the east and a door to the west. We'll start by going through the door to the east. We ran down this hallway briefly when trying to kill the Mirelurks. We can loot more bodies and loot more Mirelurk egg clutches. Eventually, we find a room to the left with more clutches inside. Against the wall, we find a locker with some Radex and Radaway inside, which is useful. We are standing in ankle-deep water and we are soaking up rads right now. There's a boatload of scrap on a counter here and a first aid box with one more stim pack inside. We find a few more lockers with miscellaneous scrap, but nothing much else of interest. So back to the hallway. We can turn left to follow this path all the way around, but this leads to a dead end. Though at the end, we find more Mirelurk egg clutches. And it's here that that water really started to get to me. I was sick with radiation poisoning. So we can start taking some rat away and pop a rat X to forestall ghoulification. Well, with this being a dead end, we can retrace our steps back into the room with the staircase and move to the other side and out the second door. This leads to a small room with more Mirelurk egg clutches and a number of lockers to loot, with minor scrap in most of them. Against the southern wall, however, we find two gun cabinets. In the first, we find a Chinese assault rifle with 5.56 millimeter rounds. And in the second, we find another laser pistol with more energy cells. On the wall above a water fountain to the west is another first aid kit with more stim packs. And when done looting this room, we can open a door to the west. This leads to another flooded hallway. 
we can round the corner and open another security door to arrive in yet another tunnel. Here we find more egg clutches on the ground, and to the west we see the silhouette of another Mirelurk. To the left we see a gate. There is a door over there, but we can't get there from here. So turning off our light and moving west up the tunnel, we can try for a sneak critical. Well, that's all of our Chinese assault rifle ammo. Switching to the laser rifle. Ooh, and even without a single point in energy weapons, this thing packs a punch. Back to the tunnel, we can continue to follow it up. We find another Mirelurk at a junction. And the laser rifle wins again. Back to the junction, we find a path leading up to the south, and then apparently two dead ends to the west and the north. Inspecting both more closely, yeah, both of these are dead ends, so our only option is to climb the ramp to the south. At the very top, we see a wide security door, and it's open. Turning off our light, we can creep in, and I know it's dark, but it's here. We see the silhouette of a Mirelurk climb up a staircase in the middle of the room, trying for a sneak critical. <laughs> Going for the legs. Oh, we almost got one, but a Mirelurk hunter was there. Quickly, we can eat some Mirelurk meat and try to heal up and then reload and try again. Oh, I hate these Mirelurk hunters. Oh. He chased me up the staircase. I ran to the very top to get some space between us. After a while, his name and health bar flickered and disappeared as if I had lost him. I turned back around to face him, but he was gone. Instead, we find a regular Mirelurk. That's the Mirelurk, Dad. Where's the hunter? Uh... He was climbing the stairs after us, but uh, then he just sort of disappeared. Well, let's see if we can find him. The hunter and the Mirelurk chased us all the way back into the large room with the staircase leading up. So retracing our steps all the way back up the tunnel and then left into the large room, we find no evidence of this Mirelurk hunter. There is another staircase in the middle of this room. We find stairs leading down and stairs leading up. Oh, wait. There he is. There was a door on this level, but let's head up the stairs to kill this Mirelurk. <laughs> the shotgun saves us again, but that was just a regular Mirelurk. Still no sign of the Mirelurk Hunter. I think he might have glitched through the floor or something. Um, I'll take it. We find ourselves on a level cluttered with filing cabinets and refuse, tipped over tables and desks. We find some Abraxo cleaner here, but nothing of interest. Instead of going back down to explore the door we passed, I wanted to see what would happen if we went all the way to the top. We find a door leading to another tunnel directly in front of us and turning around, Oh, were those gun cabinets? They are. In one, a sawed-off shotgun and shells. In another one on the opposite side of the room, a 10 millimeter pistol and ammunition. Then in a third, lying on the ground, a 32 caliber pistol and ammo. We'll go back down the stairs to see what was through that other door in just a second. For now, we'll head out this door into the tunnel to see what's here. Up. Oh, 
saved by submachine gun. After healing on up, we can turn around and explore the northern portion of this tunnel. The northern side turns west, but it's filled in with rubble. So turning back around, we can explore the tunnel south. It goes uphill. But then the southern side is blocked in with rubble. Here, however, we find a door to the west. This leads to a pathway, then a staircase that we can take up, and then a door that leads to another metro station. This is it. We found the exit. Oh, and an Edatronic on the wall. Oh, food, precious food. Oh, potato crisps. Yes. Oh, let's eat that. And I'm still only at half life. While the metro station is a wreck, the pathway to the turnstiles is blocked in with rubble, but at least the gate leading outside is clear. And this leads to the Mason District. We found it. Our way out, but... We left something behind. There was that one door halfway down that staircase that we passed. So before we leave, let's retrace our steps back to the tunnel, then into the room with the staircase, then take the staircase down one, then two flights of stairs until we arrive on the level with the big double security door to the east. Opening it. leads to another tunnel. Oh God, where's this gonna take us? Well, following the path downhill, the tunnel turns left, and here we bump into some frag mines. Thankfully, we can disarm these, and it doesn't check our explosive skill. We can disarm them and loot them. Now these will come in handy. We see a gate to the north, but then a door to the west. Stepping through. Whoa, oh shoot. I tripped a tripwire. What was this thing connected to? Over there? No? Oh, there. A shotgun trap on a table. Oh, a rigged shotgun. I couldn't deactivate it or reactivate it. It needs a repair skill of 45 or higher. So no free shotgun shells from me. Well, I'll need to pay greater attention. However, we find a lot of great loot here. There is a mine box with a frag mine inside on the bottom of this shelf at the top an ammo box with microfusion cells, a Nuka-Cola Quantum sitting on top of a gun cabinet within which we find a combat shotgun and shotgun shells. Hell yeah. Even if I trip the trap, I still walk away with a combat shotgun. Next to the combat shotgun trap, we find bottles of purified water. Then in a refrigerator, we find Glory B, a ton of food we can use to heal on up, lying on the ground. On top of a tipped over shelf is the corpse of a wastelander. We find his bed to the north. And then sitting on top of a barrel next to the bed, we find the shocker. What? And next to the shocker, a holotape labeled shocker glove. Accessing it in our inventory. Dear customer, thank you for your participation in the exciting shocker glove pilot program. You're receiving a prototype FSG version 118B model of the shocker glove. Please reference this prototype number in any future correspondence. We encourage you to make this prototype a part of your daily life and look forward to your valuable feedback. Thanks from all of us at the Shocker Glove R&D team. P.S. Shocker Glove prototypes are not for use in water, public, near small children, or domesticated animals. This is not a kitchen appliance and should not be used near uncooked food. Use of Shocker Glove prototype constitutes a binding agreement to hold manufacturer or harmless for any and all legal purposes. During prolonged use, severe electrical burns may occur. Do not look directly at Shocker Glove while operating. Some prototype models have proven sensitive to certain radio frequencies during use. If you suspect radio interference, please submit a malfunction report listing FCC broadcast frequencies in operation at the time and report to nearest emergency medical facility in your area. Well, that was a lot of gobbledygook between the lines there. With the warning label red, we can loot the Shocker. The Shocker is a power fist. While it doesn't do as much damage as Fisto, the power fist we got from the MDPL-13 power station that I covered in a video that you can watch here, it's still an incredibly powerful weapon. It has a base damage per attack of 20 and a DPS of 21.8 which is the same as a regular power fist. However, it has an unlisted special ability. It deals plus 25 electrical damage to robots. That's over double the base damage of this weapon when using against robots. It's also better than a regular power fist because it has a lower AP cost of 25 compared to 28, 
and therefore deals more damage per action point, 1.6 compared to 1.4. However, sadly, it's the least durable Power Fist in the game. It has only 400 HP compared to a regular Power Fist's 500, even lower than Fisto's 480. A character with the right perks could use this weapon as an endgame option against robots. It's a handy little thing, and I think I'll keep it. This scavenger had a bed here. Looking at the clock, we see that it's one in the morning, so we can go ahead and sleep in the bed until day. Then turning around, by the fridge, we find a staircase leading to a completely flooded section of this room. This section is filled with a bunch of metal barrels. I swam all around in here and tried to punch the barrels out of the way, but there doesn't appear to be anything buried under here. So with this room explored, we can head out. Turning north, we see that the gate does indeed block our way forward, but we already know what's on the other side. That's the tunnel that we traveled through to get to the large room with the staircase in it. We saw this doorway from the other side on the way here. We find more Mirelurk egg clutches here that we can loot for meat. Then, retracing our steps, we can go back to the big room. Instead of going up, we can take the staircase down. But we find the very bottom flooded and filled with radioactive barrels and rubble. At some places, we take on 16 rads per second, and there's nothing of interest here. So after a quick swim, we can retreat to the staircase, pop some rad away, and then take the staircase all the way back up, return to the tunnel, follow it up to the right and back to the metro station to at last exit the metro and arrive at Mason District. We arrive to greet the morning sunlight, and we are surrounded by urban ruin. The place is a mess. It looks like a nuke went off here, and one probably did. We find a large metro station marker here. On the ground next to a bus stop, we find some scrap. Then to the southeast, we find a bunch of rad roaches, and we can use the opportunity to test out our new shocker. We can loot them all to get the rad roach meat, which at this point is going to be useful. I'm low on stim packs. Heading out into the middle of the square, we see two roads going off in a sort of V-shape with buildings and a small park between them. I wanted to thoroughly explore this metro station. There's a box to the right of it, but nothing inside. However, behind it, we find a box with some mentats, cigarettes, and a milk bottle inside. Heading back to the square, we can take a look at the road signs. This one says... Dexter Avenue. But just to the north of us, we find our first super mutant. Oh, and he's coming for us. And there are more in the ruins to the east. Getting closer to increase our chances. All right, you know what? I'm switching to the shotgun. Oh, that was effective quickly looting the body. We can head behind some nearby pillars for cover. This super mutant dropped a hunting rifle. We can pull it out to test it. There are more mutants firing at us from some ruins to the east. But I just wasn't doing very good damage at this range with the hunting rifle. However, I did manage to lure one of them to me. So watching my Pip-Boy compass and waiting behind this pillar for just the right moment, we can jump out for a headshot. Oh, and that was heavily effective. Racing forward to loot the body, we can hide behind another pillar. The hunting rifle just wasn't cutting it. So racing towards the ruins, we can hide behind this wall. Peering around the corner. Oh! He's coming for us. Waiting for just the right moment. That wasn't just the right moment. Reloading, and this time waiting for the right moment. That was it. These guys are carrying hunting rifles and Chinese assault rifles. We can make great use of the repair skill to repair the ones we have on up. These mutants were firing from the ruins of this building. We still see the two streets that go on to the northeast and the northwest. I wanted to explore this ruin first. 
So heading inside, we can scour the bottom floor, but we don't find much until eventually we find a staircase in the center of the building. Moving on up to the second floor, we find a bunch of boardwalks that the mutants have placed to create a pathway from ruined ledge to ruined ledge. And here we find ammunition boxes, one with 32 caliber rounds, one with five millimeter rounds, Leaping to another ledge, we find even more ammunition boxes. One of them is empty, but we find another Chinese assault rifle, and the last one has 12 shotgun shells. Leaping down from the ruin, we can explore behind it. We find a bunch of ruined cars, but that's about it. Back to the square, we see that this road is called Andrew Avenue. So Dexter and Andrew, which one do we explore? Well, let's try going down Andrew Avenue first. We find a metro marker to the right, but it's not marked and the escalator is filled in with rubble. We can't access this metro station. Continuing down Andrew Street, we see that it opens up into a large garden plaza. In the middle of the plaza is a flooded playground. There is a huge fallen tree here, smashing into a building, and we see mutants walking around. But the end of Andrew Avenue is really exposed. There's no place to hide here. We see a blue mailbox by a lamppost here. Well, if I'm gonna have to fight these guys, I don't want to fight them here. So turning around, we can retrace our steps and along the way, admire all of the pre-war posters and billboards that dot this hellish landscape. until we reach Dexter Avenue. Then we can move north down Dexter to see if we can find some better cover. Sure enough, at the end of Dexter, we do find a bunch of wrecked cars and cement barriers that we can hide behind, but I still wasn't terribly satisfied with this. Trying to find a better spot, it was then that I noticed, oh, oh, there's a door in this building. And just in time too, for one of the mutants saw me heading inside the door. We arrive in the bottom level of a small room. We find another doorway in front of us, but our Pip-Boy compass is telling us that a mutant is about to round the corner. Yep. Two shells, one mutant. Oh, two mutants. Oh, oh. oh he got me good. Thankfully, we've got all that food we looted from the Eatertronic and the fridge and those crispy squirrel bits and all of the Marlurk meat. Oh, and those rad roaches we killed. We can munch on those for a minute. And try again. <laughs> and there's level four. At this early level, we'll dump everything into small guns. Rounding the corner and peering through the window, we find another. You know what, I'm not gonna waste ammo. He'll come for me, and I've got a shotgun. Oh great, is that a minigun? Oh, vats! Who needs vats? <laughs> that was a minigun. Oh, just in time. He drops the minigun and all of his 5mm ammunition. As cool as it would be to run around with this minigun, it's crazy heavy. And I'm not going to be specking into big guns, so I think I'll probably just leave this behind. Well, that's a lot of dead mutants, but I don't think we're done yet. Moving into the front room of this ruin, we have a great view of the plaza out the broken window. But turning around, we find a staircase leading to the second level. The mattress is gone from the bed, but here we find a table. 
Lying on the ground next to a skeleton is a sniper rifle. Yes. Next to the table is two ammunition boxes with 5.56 millimeter ammunition and 10 millimeter rounds. On the table are two frag grenades, a copy of Guns and Bullets magazine, a stim pack, and a 10 millimeter pistol. Then, on the other side of the table is a locked ammo canister that we can pick for more 5.56 millimeter ammunition. Peering out the window, sure enough, we see at least one more mutant milling about out there by the playground. Time to take this sniper rifle for a spin. And one shot does it, but he's not alone. Scanning the wall off in the distance, we find another. Looks like he came to see what that sound was, because he walks right towards the body of his brethren. And with that, I'll cautiously call this place clear. Switching to the Chinese assault rifle, we can head down the stairs and go out the front door to arrive at the intersection between Dexter Avenue and Jarndus Way. Turning left, that was Dexter Avenue, the way we came. There's a big Nuka break sign off in the distance and vault Tech posters on the wall here. Moving back towards the plaza, we find another metro marker. Okay, we're headed the right way. Somewhere over there is a metro station. Well, the playground in the middle of this plaza is flooded, but looks like we can navigate through it by taking these walkways. I wanted to finish scouring this southern edge first, and it's a good thing I did because I found a little picnic nook between these buildings. A bunch of tables and chairs with bottles laid out. Most of them are empty, but we do find one Nuka Cola, some Jet, some Buff Out, some Vodka, some Psycho, and in another box behind the shelf, we find another collection of Mentats, cigarettes, and an empty milk bottle. It's an odd and very specific combination to have in two different boxes in the same zone. With the Nook explored, we can head back to the plaza and we see that our job wasn't done. There is another mutant out there, and all we have for cover is one of these explosive cars. Well, pulling out the sniper, sadly, he sees us, so we don't get a sneak critical, but we can still take him out from range. We got him, but he nicked that car with his weapon. It began smoking. Backing up. Ooh. And that's why we don't have nuclear powered cars, people. Turning east, we find the beginning of Andrew. At least I think that's Andrew. The sun is setting and there's a bit of glare. There's that mailbox we saw at the end of Andrew. Turning around. Oh wait, no, that's Jarndus. Oh, that's right. So this is where Andrew and Jarndus meet. With daylight diminishing, we need to finish exploring Mason District quickly. Moving into the irradiated pool past some glowing fungus, we can loot the corpse of this guy. In the middle of the playground, we find a cart made from a ruined truck bed, and inside of it are a bunch of ammo canisters, with two Chinese assault rifles just lying here. One of the canisters is locked with a very easy lock inside 5.56 millimeter rounds, the same in the second, five millimeter rounds in the third, and three frag grenades in the fourth. In one of the garbage cans here, we do find some bottle caps. Exploring east through the plaza, we hear a noise. What's, oh no. The super mutants have a captive here. We can talk with the wasteland captive. The super mutants have bound the captive for transportation. The ropes are digging into her wrists. She's obviously suffered from their abuse. We could leave the captive to her fate, in which case nothing really happens, or we can untie her. Thank you. Whoever you are, thank you. The things they talked about doing to me. Look, I don't have anything to offer you except these supplies. I don't know why they didn't take it. We could say no, you'll need it more than I will, but we are 19 years old and we just left a vault. We need everything we can get, so we'll say, I'll take that. Now get out of here. You're right, I'll try to make it on my own. If I'm careful, I should be okay. With that, we still gain karma and we get 11 bottle caps and she runs off to the north. Or she tries to, kind of. Out oh, there she goes. 
We find a grisly scene around this barrel fire. The mutants had stuffed people into cages made from shopping carts. And here they either burned to death, starved to death, or were shot to death for the mutants' amusement. Moving north, we can loot the two bodies that we shot with the sniper rifle. Moving west, we find a bathtub and then a refrigerator, but then we find... Hubris Comics? What? But we're at a cement wall here. Peering up, however, we see a blinking Palowski Preservation Shelter above us. Oh, looks like we can go up, and that must be where Hubris Comics is. Moving south, we can't get there. Using this ramp, it's all blocked in with rubble. So turning around and moving north, there it is. A metro sign points the way up a ramp towards the lights. The sun has fully set now. Things are getting dark, but I wanted to explore this section over here to the east. We pass by some irradiated barrels until we find a fenced off portion. There is a pre-war bank against the eastern wall. The sign is still outside and the lights flicker above it, but we can't go through the front door. This fence is blocked off to us, but we find a small gap at the back of it. It appears to have been a pre-war parking lot. Here we find a bunch of spare tires and motorcycle parts. There's a box on the ground and inside we find some scrap and then two bottles of Radex. That's it for the parking lot. We find a gap in the fence to the west. And with the plaza completely explored, we can move to the middle of the plaza and take the ramp all the way to the ledge overlooking it. Here we find a huge pre-war statue. This thing is hard to see at night. It's much more impressive during the day. It's the heroic figure of a man in a hula hoop, I guess. It's some sort of ring. I'm not sure what it's meant to represent, but it's definitely heroic. Intimidating, even. Almost looks Soviet. Seems a little out of place in America. But what do I know? To the north, we find a bus stop and a bus parked right outside of it. We can skirt this ledge to the north and then to the east, but this just leads to a dead end. It heads back to the parking lot with the fence. We could drop down, but we can't go any further along this ledge. So turning back around, we pass by the Metro marker. It reads Franklin, and then we find a map. This is Franklin Station, and my You Are Here mod finally kicks in. There we are. All right, we started at the flooded metro. We came out at Mason District South. We just explored all of Mason District, and we have now arrived at the Hubris Comics slash Franklin Station. So they've got one marker for both Hubris Comics and Franklin Station. Looks like if we follow Franklin Station, it will eventually lead us to Falls Church Station. And from there, we'll have to make a number of choices. Moving west from the map, we find that Palowski Preservation Shelter. It's occupied. It appears to still be powered. Opening it up. Oh, looks like a mechanic stored his goods here. We find a copy of Dean's Electronics on the ground and a box filled with tools and all sorts of machinery. Nothing that we can use yet. To the south, we see that big rubble pile that we tried to climb earlier, but we couldn't. And then to the west, there it is, Hubris Comics. We see the pre-war sign still intact, but crumbling from the rooftop above us. And again, this looks awful in the dark, but during the day, it's much more impressive. No logo or anything like that, but big words, Hubris Comics. At night, the lights above them turn on and flicker. Below the sign, we find a door, and this door leads to Hubris Comics. Now, I fully explored Hubris Comics in a dedicated video, and there actually is a tunnel system beneath Hubris Comics. The flooded metro that we used to get to Mason District is not the only way to get here. If we travel through the tunnels beneath Hubris Comics, we kill a lot of ghouls along the way, but eventually we find a sewer grate leading back out to the Capital Wasteland. This puts us at Wilhelm's Wharf, which is kind of close to Vault 101. If instead of taking the road south, we would have gone east towards the Potomac, we would have bumped right into Wilhelm's Wharf and this sewer grate. It might have been easier to take the sewer system from Wilhelm's Wharf to Hubris Comics to get to the Mason District. However, there are a lot of ghouls under Hubris Comics, but at least we wouldn't have had to fight any Myrler Hunters. At any rate, I've covered everything in Hubris Comics, including the tunnels beneath the place. 
so I'm not going to cover them again here. Instead, we'll turn right towards the metro and do one final sweep. Behind the Franklin Metro, we find one more sign. This had led to Pendergrast Street before the war, but Pendergrast Street is completely filled in with the crumbling ruins of the buildings all around us. Our only way forward, then, is to head down the stairs into the Franklin Metro Station. But sadly, I'm all out of time. With that, we are well on our way to thoroughly exploring all of the metro tunnels in the Capital Wasteland. And we're level four. I started today's episode thinking we might have bit off a bit more than we could chew, but maybe, just maybe, we are up for the task. To find out for sure, be sure to tune in to my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, make sure you subscribe and click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still think you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, and YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos and access to ox emojis that they can use in the comments and during the live chat of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so grateful you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.